there are 1.3 billion people in Africa. Why don't we look at Africa? You know, we used to look at the UK, the US, and yes, those are great. We have amazing customers in those countries as well, Europe, and we, you know, we hope to expand more in those places, but Africa. My name is Ogwai Reze, I'm the Creative Director of Design Clothing Limited. Design is a women's wear brand in its 15th year. Um, <laughs> design has many stories, design has come a really long way. Um, in the time that we have been in existence, we have evolved quite a bit. Um, there has been so much that has happened in the fashion space that has allowed for us to grow into what we are today. Fabric is nice. Yeah. It's elegant. It fits. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's try the other one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. This business for me was like, um, I would say it started by chance. It wasn't like there was no detailed plan. There was no, um, you know, fixed idea. It was pretty much a case of noticing that, yes, you know, people said I had style. People used to tell me like, oh, you know, I like the way you dress and I like your, your fashion sense. And then it translated to me, um, you know, having a business arrangement with my friend where I would send her clothes and she would sell to people. And then it then translated to why don't we see how we can make these clothes. And at first it was just like taking orders, bespoke orders, and then, you know, would make for people. And then we realized that, you know, just the way it is abroad where you can walk into a store and buy clothes off the rack, why can't we have that here? Even though it was really strange and we seemed like really crazy for doing that because at the time the ready-to-wear culture wasn't great. Like no, not many people had that. Most people just had like regular boutiques where they would buy and sell. So we started by making a few garments and those few garments were well received. So we had people coming in and actually saying, oh, I like this. I can actually buy something and just go. And then that created the idea for us to do more. I remember very well there were just a few people doing ready to wear at the time. So it made perfect sense for us to expand on it. And five dresses became 10, 10 became 20, 20 became 30. And today it's a whole different story. We are manufacturing 500 dresses a month, um, shipping, exporting to different parts of the world. We didn't start with a lot of capital. We started with one sewing machine, one tailor, I think like a hundred thousand naira or something. And I mean, it's only now that I realize that with this business, it's not like, yes, you need money to start, but that's not even the key thing. You need to have the business knowledge. How are you going to turn one million into two million or five million into 10 million? Because this business can suck a lot of money. It can take so much capital and you won't see the returns um, and for me profit is key it's so important to be profitable as a brand um, however obviously we got to a point where we needed external funding to be able to expand and you know grow the business like i said we started with one machine and then we started to buy more machines more equipment we started to try to expand you know get more fabrics get more things in over the years, we've had one or two loans that we have gotten and um, it has helped. Um, I remember then Diamond Bank was doing this overdraft loan, which really helped us because then you could just use your working capital and get money to do certain things you wanted to do. And recently, there was a loan that was released by CBN called the Creative Industry Loan and we accessed it through Zenith Bank. I know a lot of people complain about not being able to access loans, but the truth is you have to have go through the process and it can be very frustrating it took time you have to submit this bring that but at the end of the day we were able to access I think the maximum was 10 million they were given but it's a single digit loan and it's all efforts by the government to try and help businesses and of course the government can do more we were able to access that loan and we put it into working capital to expand our inventory and have more stock Growing the business was very natural, it was organic. The more people patronized us, the more funding we got. So we really, really grew it from people's patronage. So I would always owe it to all the customers who you know, came through at the time, bought from us, told their friends, and it really encouraged us to keep going.
design has come a long way um, and this is just for anyone out there who is trying to grow a brand um, put in the work you know it's sleepless nights as with everything else it's not easy and it not comes easy you have to be dedicated and focused sometimes you might have to change your plan but just having the end goal in mind of what you want to achieve and ensuring that you show up every day and you keep putting in the work you will get there you will achieve it um, we have a long road ahead but for now I would say that I'm really really happy with how far we've gone and I'm happy that you know I'm here today to be able to inspire other people to keep pushing keep feeding their dreams I mean, I've looked at myself sometimes and I've thought to myself, what if I was doing something else? Where would I be now? What if I didn't do this business? You know, I've looked at people who started other businesses, maybe around the same time as me or even after me and have done much more to me. They've, they've, they've achieved much more than I have. And the path I chose, was it right? Why did I choose the harder path? Why did I choose the longer path? I've seen people who have left this business and when they see you, they say, you are still doing this thing. Ah, me, I've left you, I'm in construction now. And I mean, and for me, the one thing that keeps bringing me back is the satisfaction I see in clients when they wear the pieces. I think that has driven me further than anything else. The second thing being that people earn a living from this business. People actually survive from what they make from this business. So I can't see myself saying I will stop them from earning a living from this business. So I will go on even if it's because of that. However, when we started as a brand, I would say we started as tailors. You know, the regular tailors who just take clothes and so for people, people come and scream and say, oh, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> and um, all the drama that comes with having a um, tailoring place. Um, and um, it took a while to recognize that you had to structure your business to become a business that could stand the test of time, a business that could be recognized and called a brand. So as I grew along and identified roles that needed to be filled, and I realized that each role has to be well structured and everybody in those roles, they have to understand what they're doing, understand what the vision of the brand is. So every, everything from team building to ensuring that people understand what are we trying to achieve, we're trying to be a profitable brand, obviously, because, you know, money makes the world go round. But um, also, they have to understand the vision of ensuring that the customer is happy, ensuring that we're giving the market what it wants. We're keeping our share of the market. So um, definitely, you know, we're here to keep on building and expanding. But the structure was very important as time went on. We didn't start with a lot of structure. We just started just like a joke somehow. But, you know, somehow also with business in mind. But we've really, really really flown more towards the business side ensuring that it's a proper business the bills are paid the you know the structure is in place to make sure that everything is running properly however I have to recognize that as a brand owner the brand has to be profitable the brand has to be you know able to pay its bills because the problem we have in Nigeria is that we pretend a lot of us own businesses that are not making money but you know, it's for show. Everybody wants to appear successful, and we appear successful. We look good, we have nice skin, we dress up, we speak big English, but if you look at it, the most successful people are in ABBA. They don't have fancy brands, they don't have big businesses. They're just doing the buying and selling, trading, bringing in container loads of goods. And those are my competitors, any day, any time. And so we've gotten to the point where we now outsource production, we have a factory we work with in Enugu. That's even another interesting story. I tried to find a way to outsource production because my vision was always high street, fast fashion, mass production. And I knew that if I had a tailoring house with 10 people, I couldn't achieve that. 10 tailors cannot produce more than how many garments in a month. It's, it's physically impossible. Their capacity would only be to a certain, even if they sew 24 seven, which they can't. So how am I going to increase my capacity? And I've I tried to outsource in India, I've tried China, I've tried uh, Turkey. And the truth is, just before I found this factory that I now work with in Enugu, 
I had just come back from China just before, the year before the pandemic, I had gone to China. So I was already in talks with a factory in China and I'm so happy I didn't because the pandemic would have caused so many issues. And then someone introduced me to this factory in Enugu owned by a man and they manufacture. So 80% of the things you see here are now produced in Enugu. And again, there are people being gainfully employed. There are people earning a living because we are giving them orders. So I'm, you know, more and more falling in love with Nigeria and the idea that we can make it work. It'll be difficult and there's so many challenges, but just promoting the Buy Nigerian vision, helping more people see that you putting your money into this brand is not necessarily you giving me the money. It trickles down. It trickles down to these guys, the tailors, the staff. They make money because you patronize our business. Now I have a team of over 20 people. So, you know, design has become what it is today. Of course, thankfully, because we have our customers who have stayed with us, even through the difficult times, even through times when they were not happy with our service. They came back, they patronized, and they give us good advice. They tell us, this is, you know, we like this, we don't like this, and they've helped us to sustain our market share. We started out the whole idea of exporting just because the COVID had hit and we were like we need to find a way to expand beyond what we're doing now and it even it was really interesting because I was recently at a, a talk with Ngozi Okonjo Iwela and she mentioned something that had to do with Africa. There are 1.3 billion people in Africa. Why don't we look at Africa? And interestingly, after lockdown, we had done an advert that said, buy wholesale from us. So we had wholesale packages. We find, found a way to get wholesale MOQs, so minimum order for you to buy wholesale and all that. And so what happened was when we put it out, one of the first orders we got was from Gabon. So interesting because if you asked me to list the African countries that, oh, you know, we could, like, I'll be saying Ghana, maybe Abidjan because we have a stockist in Abidjan maybe um, maybe Egypt, you know, countries that are Gabon, I, I had never, and in the past one year we've had, I mean, we've had a substantial amount of orders wholesale from Gabon. And it has carried on, we've gotten requests from Botswana, from Mali, you know, and I am so happy because it's just making me realize that, you know, what you need is around you. You know, we used to look at the UK, the US, and yes, those are great. We have amazing customers in those countries as well, Europe, and we, you know, we hope to expand and growing and we'll keep, you know, finding new ways to impact, to give back, you know, just to, to, to maintain a culture. Nigeria is amazing. I think we're amazing people. I think our personalities are absolutely one of the best in the world. We are happy, we are we're, we're exciting. Unfortunately, I know that a lot has affected people now. You know, a lot of people have things that they are going through, but I'm thankful for where I am. I'm thankful that I have been able to stay true to growing this brand, and I haven't given up on the vision. And at least I'm steps closer than I was 15 years ago.